There's been something on my mind lately. You know that feeling when the sun comes out for the first time? It's a winter day, the air is crisp. And the snow just began to fall. You're probably wondering, where is she going with this? And sometimes, when you really can't put those feelings into words, you can make a picture. So today, I'm going to turn an idea that's been brewing in my heart into a finished illustration. And I'm bringing you along on that journey. You may remember this painting I did. An illustration based off of a feeling of euphoria I had, which I expressed in symbolism with a character. A fox. Well, now I have an idea to make another illustration with a similar magic euphoric feel. But this time, a different season, a different character. A reindeer. Why a reindeer? Let me explain. But first, let's unpack the concept of an idea itself. How do they arrive and how do we act on it? And then how do we even bring it to life through our own unique creative process? And how do you even organize all that in your head? Sometimes ideas come over the course of a few days. Sometimes you'll have an idea and then you'll pick it up years later. Other times they may come in the spur of the moment and that's when it's best to act on it before it's gone. Speaking of the moment, as I was developing the character and creating the rough sketch, which then was followed by the value study, the concept that I was going for was to really be in the moment and the feeling you get when you're fully present. And for this, I chose a snowy day, the peaceful magic of cozy snow, and a character enjoying every bit of it. This particular idea arrived while I was just doing a random sketch and exploring a color palette which will also be inspiration for the colors I choose in this painting. Every element in our picture will help us support that concept. And as early as the value study, I already begin thinking about lighting, body language of the character, expression, taking the time to discover the best way the story can be told through all of these elements. Figuring out how an image communicates in black and white, which I drew first in graphite, I can then make general shapes outlines to just figure out the composition in color. I quickly transferred three rectangles to explore three different color options. Figuring out exactly where your lighting is coming from will make your image stronger, and it will also make the color palette discovery much easier and more fun. There's a whole psychology to color and how different colors can make us feel different moods and emotions. So for this stage, I was really tapping into what I was feeling the mood I wanted to convey, and to be quite truthful, it was just stuck in my head and I needed to get it out on paper since there were a few color options brewing. What also helps me convey the mood through color is choosing words to symbolize an image, mixed in with a little bit of intuition and a ton of patience and trust in the process. So I tried out a warmer blue color palette and also pinkish color palette, and over on the top right, a little bit more of a cooler blue color palette. I want the snow to be falling and creating a super magical feel. And once done with these, the hardest part is to sometimes choose one. At times, I'll sleep on it, which helps a lot. At other times, I'll reach out to my patrons to get a fresher perspective from my favorite audience. And then the next step begins. I prepped my surface and transferred my drawing, and then I touch it up. Different mediums can help us convey the story in a different way. I chose to explore some watercolor and gouache, maybe some mixed media for this. At least that's what I had in mind. And it's very important for our surface to be able to handle our mediums. So I went with a pretty high weight of the paper. And by the way, if you're wondering for a quick and easy way to transfer your sketch onto your bigger surface, selecting tile imageable areas will print your image in four sections, and that will scale it to the size of your painting. 
and the size of my illustration is going to be roughly 16 by 20 inches. I often get asked how long the creative process usually takes. In truth, as an artist who shares her work on the internet where the whole world gets to see, it can sometimes feel pressuresome to rush the creative process to upload, when in reality we stumble upon some uncertainties like picking colors, getting overwhelmed with the amount of supplies we have, doubting the whole process as a whole, when moments ago we were ecstatic to start, some behind things are not shown, like the time it takes to mix that first color. The most important parts like the sketch, the planning phase, the bare bones and foundation of the picture may not be the funnest footage to watch, but I want to take a moment and bring attention to the fact that the creative process is a whole journey. I'm reminding myself not to rush. And although sometimes the best art happens right there and then in the moment, and at others, the more time you take on the creation, the better things marinate in a way. I mix large sums of washes in different colors for my base, and since I'll have a lot of movement with snow, I grabbed some masking fluid and masked out some areas where the snow will be falling, and this will preserve the whitest whites of the paper. While that was drying, I started to do some swatches on the color palette. I saved a little strip of paper from cutting the final surface, and then I was hit with this feeling yet again. I feel like there's always this moment before you start a painting where it's like, you get all nervous inside. <laughs> My main intention is to make this look as magical and as peaceful as possible. So I'm just gonna trust the process right now, strive for the best, hope for the best. <laughs> you know, after years of painting, this still happens. And it's like that first step into painting. You just gotta take it, you just gotta go for it. Hope that all goes well, which it will. All right, here goes nothing. This video was kindly sponsored today by Squarespace. The all-in-one platform where you can build your website, host your shop, build your portfolio, you name it. Many of you know that I've made my website with Squarespace many years back. After graduating with an illustration degree, I had a bunch of artwork and scans that I wanted to upload into my portfolio. And with their award-winning templates, I was able to just drag and drop the images and voila, it was up there. This way I was able to share my portfolio with clients and now even hold my shop so you guys can get prints. If you've been wanting the all-in-one place to start your website, head over to squarespace.com for your free trial. And once you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash justcarp for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Upon the first few stages of your painting, and once you get past that initial start, and also that funny, awkward stage, personally, with each stage, I find myself entering the flow state more and more. In between layers, I started adding random mediums to help convey the volume that I wanted. And this strictly comes in the moment for me personally. If I feel like I want to add some colored pencil, I would begin to add some. If I think that the layers needed a bit more watercolor and more washes, I would add some as well. 
There are rules sometimes, and as long as you know the way certain mediums perform, you can make room and time to break the rules and kind of make your own, and maybe take some risks. It may not seem like much, but adding these darker blues terrified me, but I was glad that I did it in the end. If you've worked with watercolor before, you know it performs beautifully when you bring in hundreds of different layers. There are a ton of different techniques when it comes to different mediums, and with each picture you make, you're presented with choices. Just like every moment, every miracle, we're given a choice on what to focus on, and that choice is ours to take. Little by little, I started introducing colors from the overall illustration with different mediums. I really wanted to build the environment, create a beautiful composition to have the water leading in an S composition, and for us to know that there are trees in the background, but also have them very subtle and beautiful in the back as well. I've been melting over this lavender pigment and I've been also experimenting with the deeper blues. Reflecting back on some of my work, I realized I use a lot of warm colors, yellows and oranges, so this was definitely interesting to use blues, purples, and pinks. One of the most important parts of my creative process lately has been setting a very cozy and comfy and functional environment, making sure everything is at hand and for some reason, candles just really ground me, especially in the evening time. Cause next thing I know, I've been painting for hours. Another important part of my creative process is blasting music while I'm painting. Sometimes it involves singing while I'm painting, sometimes dancing, and most of the time, lots of distractions from the most cutest studio buddy in the world. And at other times, yeah, uh, no comment. Go back in and add more dimension to the trees and add a little bit of more snow, I started with gouache. This is after the watercolor layer was put down and as the trees were getting further in the distance I was adding a little bit more white and if we're closer I was adding a little bit more saturation and blues and lavenders. In the sketch at first I wanted to have this be a very general blue area in the background but I decided to add a little bit more definition and a little bit of sparkle and I was moving slowly and just taking my time with this. With each piece, I like to set an intention to achieve a new goal or try to achieve a new challenge within my own work. With this one, I wanted to play with saturation and desaturation and beautiful lighting to convey a specific mood. And also, to support our main protagonist and character in the painting, I did my best to create this whimsical moment around him. Yeah. 
Some of my favorite childhood memories were in the snow. We had a big backyard with lots of snow. I loved looking up at the snow, sticking my tongue out and letting the snowflakes fall. It was just so peaceful. I really wanted to create the movement of the snow falling and swooshing and circling around the reindeer. Going back and forth with lots of dry brush and then some pinks to create a little bit more of that magic. It was a constant push and pull between color, contrast, texture. Asking things like, what should I soften? What should I make a little more detailed? What elements in the environment have extra texture? Every mark had its purpose. So let's go back to why the reindeer? Well, I love reading about little symbolism with animals and after reading some articles and some old history stories, reindeer can symbolize wisdom, creativity, and inventiveness. And besides, they're quite adorable. Each day, I'm reminded that some of the magic is in the simple moments, in nature, sometimes with your loved ones, sometimes alone. Getting lost in the story and magic of this illustration reminded me the magic of staying present in moments like these, and to never forget how truly special they are. Now there's one more feeling in the creative process, the bittersweet feeling when it's complete. 